everyone welcome to your thursday evening dose of astronomy all astro kids out there hope you're having a great week uh in spite of a uh, kind of thing with the shuttle it'll pretend that didn't happen but it'll happen again on saturday so great i'm irene pease and i'm here with the amateur astronomers association we're going to be checking out some what's up in the sky this week as well as a uh, request to look at some constellations along the ecliptic and see what those look like from different parts of our solar system and why they're there. So tonight I'm going to be using um, my usual uh, some Stellarium visualizations. You can find that at stellarium.org and also using uh, Open Space Project. Uh, so, sorry, open space, but yeah, you can find more about them and download them for free, openspaceproject.com. And also, I think they have a calendar of other streams and other open space events. So, that's what I'll be using tonight. And uh, let's jump right in. So, this is our kind of view of uh, the sunset over New York City. <laughs> I'm actually right above Brooklyn near the Brooklyn Museum. So kind of near where I am right now, I just really like this view. I haven't shared it in a couple weeks. So this is, um, we have some stars in the field that we wouldn't normally uh, get to see just looking up in the sky, but uh, it's kind of one of the fun things we can do in open space, see the stars during the day. We can also see that with Stellarium and I'll be checking that out. Yeah, now I guess, now's a good time. So as usual, we start with now in the sky. So let's pop over to Stellarium. Uh, yeah, Stellarium. All right. So Stellarium, um, <clears throat> we're looking at uh, kind of turn around and look towards the west where the sun has been trying to set. I guess it's, it's usually behind that tree there. Um, so again, this week I want to talk about uh, the path of the solar system, what we call the ecliptic. And so I'm going to go ahead and just bring up my time and we'll kind of fast forward till dark. So an hour from now, uh, we're starting to see some of the bright stars come out. Um, that mercury is behind the tree again. <laughs> I really need to chop down that tree. Um, but hopefully some people were able to see Mercury and Venus last week. Uh, I was out a little too early. I was able to see them, but um, not get very good pictures. So thanks to those of you who sent pictures. That was pretty awesome of you. I uh, really appreciate, <laughs> appreciate that. So tonight, um, checking out, we should have a moon up there. Let's scroll out a little bit so you can see the moon. Here it looks like kind of a bright spot, but let's go ahead and center on it and uh, zoom in a little bit. Um, we move in moon, it's kind of a crescent, right? So, uh, moving towards about half phase. So if actually, if I click on the moon again, it gives you, whoa, all the fun things you really want to know about the moon. And you have, uh, what am I looking for? The date, right? So the moon age, so it's 6.2 days old. And this illuminated 37.6% of the side that's facing us is currently illuminated by sunlight. So that's good to know. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it's going to be doing over the next week. Right. So over the next week, those of you, again, familiar with kind of how the moon moves from one night to the next. I'm just going to pop through time. Actually, I'm going to fast forward a little bit to... Uh, We'll move to 10 at 10 o'clock where it's, yeah, a little bit darker. And we can pause time, just pause at 10 o'clock. It's a nice time of night. Um, so it'll still be plenty high up tonight. Uh, if we we're looking through the week, tomorrow, let's see, that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And by next week, um, it's going to be basically full. I think it's almost completely full next week. We clicked Stellarium tells us all the things we need to know. 99.4%. Yeah, that's about as full as it gets. So halfway through its cycle, 14 day old moon. So goes through, you know, quarter cycle every week. But I don't want to talk so much about the cycles. That's, that's one thing that you can notice if you follow the moon this week. And that's going to be kind of my challenge for you this week is following the moon. I, I don't think it's very clear tonight in New York City. 
but um <laughs> but yeah see if you can check out that croissant moon <laughs> thanks chris um yeah <laughs> see if you can check out the croissant moon and, and all the other fun shapes that'll go through um over the next week or so and we're going to use the moon as a marker because again i want to talk about the constellations that it appears to pass through so we're going to come back to tonight rewind time so just hop in your delorean back to the 20 today's the 29th right no 28th okay i'm trying to remember <laughs> it's been a long day so uh so we're back to tonight and i'm gonna turn on just constellation outlines um you know what let's get fancy let's let's use the pretty pictures for what they're worth all right so right now the moon is like on the lower lip of this lion thing, right? So there we have Leo, uh, Leo the lion. Um, and over the next few days, so over the next week, let's just see what constellations it's gonna pass through. So I think Leo, I've already mentioned a few times, if you haven't had a chance to check out Leo, go find the moon tonight or click tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, the moon will still appear um, in the constellation Leo meaning it appears against the backdrop of these background stars that are much, much further away, and they make this shape that we call Leo the Lion um, in our two-dimensional sky, basically. So uh, so the moon's going to be in Leo, and then, ooh, and now it's moving on to this lady's head that's Virgo. So I think I, I mentioned Spica a few times, so you've been practicing arcing to Arcturus and speeding on to Spica. So let's just quick review right so we look way overhead tilt your head way back try not to break your neck um, and you're using the the arc of the handle of the big dipper arc to arcturus i promise i will talk about this constellation more sometime um, and then speeding on to spica right so if you're not sure which one's spica look out on the first i think that's next monday and the moon will be relatively close it'll be the brightest star near the moon next monday so again we're using the moon as a marker to find these constellations so Leo, Virgo, back to our pretty pictures, because we can. And next constellation, wait, did I, I, sorry, I erased our, our cheat sheet. Um, the next constellation is going to get to uh, Libra, the scales. So for, for all you folks out there in the U.S. who um, are frustrated with the imperial system like why don't we use metric again i just don't remember um pounds lb scales libra in case you were ever wondering why lb stood for pounds i wondered for most of my life i think i found that out like two years ago anyway so that's um libra <laughs> the scales which technically measure mass not force but whatever and then you get to next week we'll have it going into the giant cuddly claws of the scorpion, Scorpius, right? So it'll be passing into another animal. So these constellations, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpius, and more, those all lie along this, this plane of the solar system, the ecliptic. So we see the moon, and as it turns out, the sun and the planets um, all pass along that line. They're always going to be along that line. So if we actually turn on the line in our sky, all our fancy markings, so we're turning on the ecliptic, ecliptic line on, and there we go. There's the ecliptic. So yeah, we see it passes through Scorpius, Libra, Virgo, Leo, Cancer, Gemini, and then some. So this is, again, the plane of the solar system as seen from Earth. So what I want to do is actually do that thing where I turn off the atmosphere. So y'all just going to have to hold your breath for a while. <laughs> um, and we'll go, yeah, we'll just go back to daytime. Back a few days, back to daytime. Because I want you to see where the sun is, is, is traveling. So we're going to go uh, do a bit of time travel this, this evening and... I think I can turn off some of these. I'll leave those pretty lines on. Um, so I want to see where the sun is, like what constellations, what star patterns 
the sun seems to pass through over the course of the year. So as you can see, this is, you know, late May, um, like a few days from now. And I'm just going to go ahead and click the sun. I guess maybe I don't need to click on that. Yeah, we'll just zoom out a little bit. And yeah, I'm just going to chug through time. All right. So right now, the sun, if you're out during the day, and if we took away, we'll take away the atmosphere. Hold your breath for a while. Take away the atmosphere. We can see all these other fun things because I want you to also see the planet. So here we see Mercury. Remember Mercury and Venus. Venus is getting close to the sun, so we're not seeing that at sunset so much anymore. But maybe some of you are still able to see Mercury in the evening. Uh, Uranus is much fainter. It can be seen with the unaided eye, but it's but that's a little tricky. That that'll be a challenge for another week uh, way down the road. But let's just go ahead and watch the sun. So you'll notice that I don't know if I can zoom in on Uranus. Um, but even like Venus and Mercury aren't exactly along this line and the moon, eh, we don't have a moon right now, moon will come back, um, but the moon won't be exactly along the line. But the sun, the sun is exactly along the line. It's like it knows. Wow. And it's just going to stay on that line because it's actually the sun's position over the course of the year that defines that line. So it's not like a coincidence. Like that's actually how we define the line. We say, all right, where is the sun? Like every single day of the year. So we're going to fast forward through June. So this is where the sun is all through June. And oh, look, here comes the moon. Not quite on the ecliptic, but pretty close. All right. Um, so we can follow it through June, July. Oh, there's the moon again every month. Oh, see what you did there. Um, and eventually we'll get to some other uh, other planets should be bopping along here. Uh, but they're all going to be very close to the ecliptic, but the sun will always be exactly on the ecliptic. There's our little friends. Well, our big friends, our big distant friends, Jupiter and Saturn. Oh, oh, look what they're doing in December. Yeah, we'll take we'll talk more about that. That's going to be that's going to be a fun thing. So again, not exactly on the ecliptic, the sun still exactly on the ecliptic because that's how we define the line. So we'll just kind of keep zipping through. We still haven't seen Mars yet, so we should, you know, wait for Mars because Mars is great. But yeah, so that's that's uh, the path of the sun over the course of the year against the background stars. And since the planets are all going around the sun and kind of like this big flat plane, um, they kind of stay pretty close to being along that line. Um, not exactly, but more or less, right? So here comes Mars um, doing its thing, right? So that's kind of what I wanted to show in Stellarium. So as I went through, I didn't call out all of the constellations. Um, we'll see those again in a little bit, or I can just kind of zip through them. You know what? Yeah, let's just do that now while we have these pretty pictures. All right, so Gemini, yep, okay. Twins, uh, Cancer, that's a crab. So it looks more crabby than Cancer-y. So there's Tropic of Cancer, that's, yeah, that's the one. Um, we have uh, Taurus. So again, that's kind of where if we go back to now. Um, I'll just go back a year. If we go back to, yeah, that's kind of now. Uh, the sun appears against this this, these stars that we see in the shape of a, a bull, Taurus the bull, or at least half a bull. I don't know what happened to the other part of them. Um, Aries, so we have a, a little ram, a little like kind of goat thing there. We have uh, Pisces, uh, some fish tied together. I'm sure there's a good story about why that happened. Um, Aquarius, the water bear, so that's a person, not an animal. We have a fake animal, a couple fake animals, imaginary things haven't really seen these at the Bronx Zoo. Um, there's a Capricornus, the sea goat, so part goat and then part fish. So it's like, it's like these two got too close and then bam. Okay. Actually, I have no idea what the story is there, but anyway, and then um, Sagittarius, right? So Sagittarius, half man, half horse. We have an archer there. Uh, keep scrolling backwards. And then we're back to, uh, back to Scorpius, right? So a lot of the constellations along this line are animals, not all of them, right? So we have the water bearer, we have uh, Virgo, we have the scales, but a lot of them are animals. And so these are 
um, these became known as the zodiac, so a similar root as zoo. So it's like a it's like a zoo in the sky, right? So they're sky animals. Um, so there's lots of other constellations that are animals. If we just kind of like look up, there's bears and lynxes and and camel leopards that we call giraffes nowadays, and uh, whales and birds and dragons. You know, dragons at the Bronx Zoo. Um, yeah, dogs, rabbit lots of birds there's there's like so many birds but those are yeah those are the the ones that are along the ecliptic so that's our, our sky zoo as i like to call it so i want to go ahead and pop out then to stellarium or sorry from stellarium back out to uh to open space and kind of take a look at how this would look in three dimensions so well did Stellarium adieu for now. Just kidding. And back to, op to open space. All right. So, oh, look at that sunset. That's so nice. All right. Goodbye, sun. Hello, lines of the planets. So these are the paths of the planets, the orbits of the planets that open space projects. And again, if I turn on some constellation lines here um, we can see constellations uh, the zodiacal constellations are a different color so those are red and then most of the other constellations are that kind of salmon except for um, Orion and Ursa Major that are uh, the darker blue so I think we need to kind of move away move away from the earth uh, out into space so we just left the atmosphere and turn around and see if I can find the earth back here somewhere and kind of just take like a bird's eye view of this briefly. Um, actually, yeah, so we'll start with a bird's eye view and then we'll maybe watch from elsewhere. So there's earth, right? So we have earth, we have the moon going around the earth. It's going this way. Doesn't sound like that, but it's, it's the sound. That's my NASA logo sound. Uh, and we're going to take a look at, wait, yeah, solar system. Okay. So solar system and all the constellations in the background. So if we're looking down from Earth's North Pole, so we're kind of looking yeah, at the, at the Earth's North Pole at this point, Earth's North Pole, it's Earth over there. Um, so again, we're seeing the southern sky in the background. So if those constellation uh, outlines don't look familiar, that's that might be why if you're not uh, familiar with the southern sky. Um, I'm not as familiar as I'd like to be either. But I thought it'd be fun, um, again, just to kind of turn edge on. So even from out here, from anywhere in the solar system, right, big flat solar system, because the stars are so far away, those those orbits are always going to appear along a line so actually what i thought would be super fun would be to visit another planet and if there are any requests i will take a request for a planet so just holler in the uh comments if there's a planet that you'd really like otherwise i get to pick but i'm happy to uh to take a request here any any takers on the planets. Who has a favorite planet? We have, you know, there's Mercury, Venus, Earth we already did, been there, done that. Mars we've kind of done, so I'm thinking maybe not Mars. If we come out further, there's Jupiter's orbit, a little further out, Saturn, Saturn somewhere out here, eventually, oh, oh, there it is. Saturn. <laughs> we like them all. All right. <laughs> that works for me too. So yeah, I pick, I pick. <laughs> um, it'll be a surprise. Um, whoop. Okay. Maybe not too much of a surprise. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's fly around here. Coming in towards, yeah, we're going towards Saturn. And actually, just 
because we can um heading into specifically a moon around saturn um you get brownie points if you can guess before we get there and oh just cleared saturn glad we didn't smash into that space is big but there's other stuff that's big in space so it looks like an empty ball i promise there's a skin yes we have houston we have an enceladus so enceladus is one of the icy moons of saturn it's really cool because of the so-called tiger stripes um so some pretty nifty stuff happening on enceladus but just for kicks let's land Ooh. Oh, landing very carefully. Uh, landing, landing on Enceladus. Uh, try not to crash into Enceladus. Just land, just land. Don't crash. Just land. Landing, and I'm gonna call that close enough. All right. So basically, on Enceladus, looking up at the sky as seen from Enceladus. Uh, if we kind of gaze around back over here oh look there's the inner solar system which is a lot of the solar system most of the planets at this point because it's from saturn the only outer planets are uranus and neptune um but we can see that yeah the 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 orbits still seem to lie along this line along the ecliptic so we have some extra lines in here i, I was going to make a thing to turn those off earlier but so ignore the kind of peachy colored lines. Those are other moons of Saturn, um, which aren't going to be exactly along the ecliptic. Um, Saturn is tilted on its axis, just like Earth is tilted a little bit. So just like our moon is, you know, further off the ecliptic than, than the planets are, um, some of Saturn's moons are going to appear further off the ecliptic as seen from Saturn um, than the, the planets of the solar system themselves. But yeah, we look out and we recognize... Maybe, maybe not. Um, you might see this guy kind of upside down-ish from what we're used to seeing. So there's Orion. And along the ecliptic, yeah, right between Gemini and uh, Cancer. All right. And then maybe more familiar over here, kind of the backwards question mark of Leo the lion. He's lying down like you do. So... Um, so I'm actually going to move a little bit away from Enceladus and we'll go ahead and uh, kind of pan around and take a look at Saturn itself and maybe just move through a little bit of Saturn's year. Uh, no, I lost Saturn. Um, <laughs> through a little bit of oh, Saturn's year, if I can find it. So we'll move out a little further. A little further. Yeah, there we go. Mm, Saturn. So even for Saturn, if we were out at Saturn looking back at the sun, we would see the sun pass through all these same constellations. Again, the stars are so far away that we're going to see the same star patterns from everywhere within the solar system. Even the outer parts of the solar system, the, the outer planets out past like the, the, uh, the Oort cloud, um, even out there, uh, those are going to be uh, basically the same pattern. So it's not till we get pretty far out there that a few light years really that the the stars start to, the star patterns that we're familiar with start to warp and stuff. So I want to move a little bit away from Saturn so that hopefully this won't crash. It kind of crashed earlier, <laughs> like less than an hour ago when I was practicing. I had too much stuff on. Um, and a uh, quick question. Um, I think if we go way past the equator on Earth, Orion would appear upside down. Absolutely, yes. So that's a, a fun thing I like to show people in some of my classes is looking at, um, looking at the southern sky and basically seeing Orion with a different orientation and if, especially if you're used to looking at Orion a certain way it is pretty <laughs> pretty disorienting and some people get uh, kind of a little turned around there people that are even you know familiar with it 
so I can move out a little further here and oh yeah, because I'm still centered on Enceladus but we move through several days and it might take a little while um, let me try pause a thing um, Saturn All right, yeah, so we go through a few months at a time because Saturn, um, so Saturn is associated with iron and moving slowly and make sure that I'm actually where I want to be. Um, I think I'm where I want to be. Yep, I'm where I want to be. Um, so it does this year's uh, 30, 35 years to go all the way around the solar system. But if I try to kind of keep the sun in view here, you see it passing through Virgo. So we, if you were on Saturn, you would see the sun pass through Virgo. You would see the sun pass through Libra. You would see the sun pass through Scorpius. And wait a second, what's that? What's this? There's a hook here. This is not Scorpius and it's not Sagittarius. We're like, okay, yeah. So there's something else I want to show you just because it can. Um, so the plane of the solar system actually passes through uh, what some people call the 13th constellation of the zodiac. Um, this big, I don't know, it's kind of coffin shaped thing, I think. Um, looks like, I don't know, it kind of creeps me out sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer. So he's got two pieces of serpent on either side of him. So piece of serpent, other piece of serpent. Um, but yeah, Ophiuchus, uh, does actually have the uh, uh, ecliptic passing through the, the lower part, but most people kind of just like sweep that under the proverbial rug and say, nah. Um, but yeah, if you ever hear about that, that's, that's, that's where we are. And if you notice, so I just turned on, these are, these are constellation boundaries. Uh, maybe you can just turn off the lines for a minute, but you can see <laughs> what a thin section of Scorpius the ecliptic actually passes through. So usually when the uh, an object appears against the background of Ophiuchus, we kind of credit that with Scorpius, I guess. I don't know. I don't really follow that much. Um, but but yeah, Ophiuchus actually has quite a bit of real estate along the ecliptic, more than some of the more well-known constellations, which kind of brings me back to, um, I want to go back to Earth. So we're going to zoom um, we'll switch out our constellations to lines instead of boundaries and zoom whoa, back to Earth. And just one more thing. Um, so what I want to show is kind of when we see different constellations in the sky compared to, well, I mean, I guess I've been kind of dancing around it, but astrological signs, right? So astrology does have roots in astronomy. Um, but as we can see, if I set us to now, reset, right? So here we are at now. Um, so at the end of that little line, that's the Earth. I'm just going to turn on just the Earth uh, trail. So at the end of that little line, that's the Earth. And I'm going to try and make the Earth a little bit bigger, bigger earth, um, and just kind of take a look at what we mean even when we're talking about like our different night skies. So I'll scale the earth up about, yeah, 100 times. Bigger earth, bigger marker, so we can see that there, right? So this is, this is May, right? So if we're on the earth, and we're looking towards the sun. In May, the sun appears against the backdrop of, um, of Taurus. So we'll say the sun is in Taurus, or we also talk about deep sky objects like clusters and galaxies and nebula as quote unquote being in a constellation, which means they appear in the same part of the sky as that, that group of that kind of star pattern. So we can use coordinates like la latitude, latitude type of coordinates um, except we call them right ascension and declination on the sky. They're a little bit different, but sometimes it's it's just easier to you know shout out like a a constellation. So for example, if I just rattled off a couple 
random uh, latitude longitude coordinates on earth like that might not mean anything to you but if i say russia that like that paints a better picture of like where on the globe we're talking about so we kind of like to use the constellations to help us kind of orient ourselves and, and find our way around in addition to you know looking at the pretty patterns so right now if we're out during the day looking towards the sun you see the sun in the constellation um what was in taurus but here at night we see a very different sky right we're seeing leo and virgo so again if you have some constellation that's out during the day it's not going to be out at night so if you know what constellation the sun was in when you were born you can't see that constellation on your birthday because that's where the sun is <laughs> and so once it's nighttime and the stars are out well then your constellation is set but you can see your constellation several months later in the night sky once the sun has moved along its path and is no longer brightly illuminating that constellation so um I guess I'm about out of time for this evening. We can do some more solar kind of gazing and, and 3D moving through the solar system another time. If you have questions, comments, feel free to leave those. And uh, I guess just thanks for viewing. So again, uh, just a reminder, let me throw my credits back up here. The visualization software um, that I've been using tonight, again, was Stellarium earlier on. And uh, what you're seeing now is Open Space from OpenSpaceProject.com. I'm Irene Pease with the Amateur Astronomers Association in New York. Um, thanks for getting uh, just a little dose of astronomy on your Thursday evening, and have a good night.